Welcome to Sober Doc Coffee, a weekly coffee chat sharing experience, strength, and hope for anyone on the sober road to recovery. You can download Sober Doc Coffee weekly on all podcast platforms and check us out on Instagram at Sober Doc Coffee Podcast and on Twitter at Sober Coffee Pod. To learn more about us and to help support these sessions, visit online at Sober Doc Coffee. Here are your hosts, two guys on their own path to recovery, Mike and Glenn. Let's join them at the coffee shop. I'd like to say good morning, but first we have to break for this commercial announcement. Oh, dude, we don't have commercials. Oh, you, right. You know I, what's funny I keep forgetting is, that. I actually was at a meeting uh, last week. And like this an guy, AA meeting or a business AA, meeting? No, AA okay. meeting. And this guy comes up to me and he goes, hey, man, are you Glenn from that uh, podcast? <laughs> I'm like, well, it depends on which one, the Joe Rogan one? Yeah, that's me. Yeah, I'm Joe Rogan. Yeah. And <laughs> so he started laughing. And he said, you know, no. He goes, hey, I'll tell you what I really appreciate. I'm like, what's that? He goes, you guys don't do a bunch of commercials. All yeah, right. And I'm like, no, we don't, man. We just get in and we we dig in on sobriety. Yeah, that's what it's all about. So there's no commercials. Cut that out. Yeah. So we, you know, we started this thing out with uh, one goal in mind, and that was to just help one struggling alcoholic. And um, if, you know, based on the feedback, and we felt too, you and me. Yeah. Right. Right. But we've gotten some great feedback. Keep it coming. Sign up for the newsletter. It helps us connect. It lets you know what we got going on on our end, and it allows you to let us know what you got going on on your end. Absolutely, we we love connecting. That's how we've had a lot of guests, you know, on and really bringing value because, you know, they they reached out and said hi, you know, and started a conversation. So that's great. So it's sober coffee. Yeah, is yeah. our website www.sober.coffee. Yep, and then not we're on sober decaffeinated. No decaf here. No. No way. I man. wonder if that's a thing. Can you get a dot decaffeinated website? I guess anything's no, possible I these not, days. I've, I was surprised to see the uh, dot coffee. Right, right. <clears throat> and just to let folks know is we are eventually going to uh, YouTube. And so uh, our engineer, Barista Brian, is, is testing. And Mikey's big mug's up here and looking really sexy, man. You're looking... You know what? I almost see the value in YouTube now. Oh, yeah. You know, right. you're up front, you're center, you're looking great, bringing, bringing sobriety. The, the camera takes 10 pounds, adds 10 pounds. That puts me up to about 90. Yeah, so <laughs> it puts me up to 340. I'm looking, I'm looking a little beefy now. I know, that's great. Hey, let's get down to the business to help and one another uh, stay I sober. How does that it. sound? Yeah, uh, it sounds great. Yeah, so we're we're continuing on in the series. Uh, we're getting down to the bottom here. We got a couple left, and these are search terms that people have laid out on Google, and um, to the tune of hundreds of thousands. How interesting is that? Yeah, I, you know, well, it's uh, you know, I think this internet thing might be here to stay. Well, I mean, it's funny because we're we're in here in the coffee shop, right? And and we're chatting about you know our own experience, strength, and hope, right. and topics that are relevant to us and things we see in the rooms and, you know, guest topics or whatnot, right? And and often we sat there and said, boy, I wonder what our listeners, you know, I wonder what people who are, you know, I wonder what's going through their heads. Right. And so we, we did this Google thing. And I mean, to the hundreds of thousands of searches on Google, yeah. recent searches, yes. we can see what people are really grasping for. Yeah. And today today's topic is what does sober mean? So hashtag trending series. Yes. Today's what, what does sober mean? Does sober mean? So I, I Webstered it. Do you want to know what Mr. Webster says? Love to. And he's so wrong, by the way. Not intoxicated. Period. No, I can see a lot of people. I can see some officers when they're pulling up to you, right? And and that could be how they define it. Yeah. You know, okay. Hey, Mike, if you had something to drink, are are you sober? Right. Right. Well, there's a there's a little website called um, uh, I forgot now, uh, but what it what, what it does last drink? <laughs> yeah, right. It uh, it talks it it lays out a, a word and then the community creates the definition. So their definition of sober What's that called Wikipedia. No, no, I, I I'll have to check it out. I'll oh, put it up on I'll put it up in the resource a new room. New tool, nice. But. They say developing personal integrity is sober. Making peace with yourself uh, is is one of them. And, yeah, cleaning up the past is right. one of them. So, so let's, um, let's preface this and then, and then we'll unpack it. One is we had Dr. John on recently. He's in one of the recent episodes. I don't have the episode number in front of me. But he, he did a session called 
what is sober. And Dr. Mm-hmm. John's been in the field. He's actually was a psychiatrist uh, focused on right. addiction, right? And, and recovery, right? Yeah, and recovery. And then he's in the room himself, right? right? But we did a really good deep dive on what is sober. That was kind of prior to our um, hashtag trending series. Um, you know, but, you know, initially, you know, I, I would say, you know, without being on the path, I would say, you know, um, not drinking or using any mind-altering substances. Non-AA, that's what I would have said. Yeah. That's what I would have said. But in AA? It has a whole different whole term. Whole new right? definition. Whole different, whole different you meaning. You know, and part of it's all the different sayings we have in AA, but the one I want to, you know, point to right off the bat is the three words. You know, do you, do you live drunk, do you live dry, or do you live sober? Right. And and to that end, on a previous series, on the hashtag series, we we discussed, we didn't answer any questions. We never do. We, <laughs> we just talked about That's it. right. We talked about what, is dry, uh, right? what is dry drunk, right? So go back and listen to that one. But so the opposite, or at least an option, an alternative to dry drunk is this sober thing. And people are asking, well, what does that mean? And, um, oh, I know what it was called. It was called Your Dictionary. See? Things nice. come back to me. Nice. And, and they, they framed it as characterized by reason, sanity, or self-control showing mental and emotional balance. I love that. Emotional balance. I underline that one because, to me, that's the that quest of sobriety. That was on Your Dictionary? The group of people said that? That's right. Emotional balance was the end phrase. It was characterized by reason, sanity, or self-control showing mental and emotional balance. Wow. And that was the I number like that. one that was the number one thumbs up on yourdictionary.com. Mm-hmm. But I love the emotional balance. To me that really that really struck a chord because th- that really is a good definition for this guy. It's there's a balance. I've said it so many times the last couple of days. I used to live pre-recovery, Mike. Used to live zooming high, going a thousand miles an hour, mm-hmm. or crashing and going zero miles an hour. That those were my two speeds. Those were those were my guard. My, nothing in the middle. My, nothing in the middle. I did no nothing medium. in the middle. Now mm. I my existence is in the middle. Oh, do I get a little high? Do I get a little low? Absolutely. But my existence, my balance is it, I'm in the middle. So on a scale one to ten, you live between four and six. Absolutely, yeah. And and now, mind you, I'll have ten days, you know, where I'm just like, okay, I'm. What does it take out. you to get to seven, eight, or ten? Um, th- my own inability to say no, or situational stress. Will get me there. Let's say some. Let's say there's a conflict so in a relationship. 10, well, are you looking at ten as a good thing? No, ten. Anything outside that mean is is the danger zone. So I look at ten as being like super bumblebee, fantastic. Right. Okay. Top yeah. of the Ferris wheel. Top of the Ferris wheel is a ten. Right. Right. And and one being the bottom of the Ferris wheel. Right. Right. So you, how much of your time do you live between four and six? Eighty plus. Wow. And and I'd like to tell you that that's because I have the strategy. And guess what? I'm going to tell you I have a strategy. I I go to meetings. I stay connected. I meet with my sponsor once a week where we do step work. Still, I mean, some would say I don't need to do that. What step you on? Uh, six, seven. We're reading a book called The Ripple Effect. Really hmm. good book. And it covers six, seven, and and ten. It's by the people who wrote "Drop the Rock." Yeah. So are you redoing six and seven? Or sure. Yeah. Absolutely. So you've you've been through all twelve steps. Uh, yes. Then why would you need to do, go through them again? <laughs> I'm being funny. Asking well, that. no, no. I'll tell you. Why. I'll tell know, you exactly but... why. Because I'm go- I'm with a sponsor, a new sponsor, uh-huh. and my job is to, according to the 12 step, my primary purpose is to stay sober and help others to achieve sobriety, mm-hmm. right? To help the next struggling alcoholic. And I need to know this guy is very, in, everything comes out of the big book. Mm-hmm. I needed to learn again from a big book perspective so that I can teach again from the big book perspective. So you are becoming a, a deeper dive student of right. the big book. So that I so can, you can become be a, a teacher. professor. You no, know, let's let's start with kindergarten teacher. <laughs> kindergarten teacher. No, I get that. I love it. 
Right. You know, I, you know, I totally love it. Yeah, and that's um, why I'm doing it. And and the only reason I, I so, so you're switched really, my you're sponsor really to Florida. Yeah, I really am. I really am. And, and I, I identify when I'm starting to get outside that realm, and, and that to me is old Mike. Because really, if you live the principles of the program as they've been taught to me and as I've been learning to live them, then everything hinges on acceptance. So I'm not accepting if I'm outside, if I'm a seven or I'm a, or I'm a three. I'm not accepting the scenario the way, the, the way it is. I mean, no, I get that. So let me bounce. What do you think my numbers are? If, you know, if I say 10's the top of the first wheel, where do you think I live? And I want to make sure we're talking about the same thing. I'm not just talking about feeling good. I'm talking about I'm talking about this emotional balance. I be, I believe you to be a five. Really? An emotional balance. Now, physical. Do I think you take on too much stuff? Do I think you don't get enough <laughs> sleep? You know, that's a topic check, check, for a check. whole other yeah, podcast. Check, check, check. So, right. So, are you are you physically balanced? Are you spiritually balanced? Absolutely, you're you're not you're you're not just trying to become intellectual. You're trying to live your faith. Yep. You're not, and on the other side of it, you're not ignoring your faith. You're 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 balanced. You know, so that's yeah, where I no, would put I see, you. No, I see what you're so saying. So I just now. want to make no, sure the same sense. thing. No, it, how many times am I giddy versus how many times am I not? See, that's kind of how shed? I was looking at it. Yeah, and, 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 and that was the wrong way of looking at it. Right, because because I can feel like I'm at the top of the right. Ferris wheel when re- the reality is I'm not looking at, I'm not accepting the things the way they really are. So it really has nothing to do with where I'm at on the first wheel. It's am I okay? From a balanced perspective, with wherever I'm at in the first wheel, that's right. I'm not falling off. I'm balanced. That's right. And I'll take it one step I, further. I, get that. I take it one step further. It's deep. You're comfortable with your hands on the levers of the Ferris wheel. So now you're off the Ferris wheel, and you become the guy moving the Ferris wheel. And you know when it's time to ramp it up, when it's time to slow it down and stop it, so that people can get off. Mm-hmm. I mean, you know. I interesting. Don't know. Interesting. Yeah. yeah. So, so very interesting. That's so, my take on sobriety, and so, and, be, and so what, you, what I think sober means. Do you live sober? Absolutely. What percentage of the time? Uh, Eighty. Yeah. And and again, that doesn't mean I'm drinking twenty percent of the times. That just means the twenty percent of the time I'm thinking the way Mike used to think. Could because your left-handed, right-handed thing—that's my go-to. I'm going to yeah, revert, that's I'm going to that's a back really to good way of, of looking at it is what percentage is the sober I mean I shouldn't use that term what what percentage is the the new way of living Mike and mm-hmm. what percentage is the re- reversion back to and that reversion scares the shit out of me yeah well that's where awareness because if you're if you're playing in that field too much uh, right then the thing can take momentum. Yeah. Absolutely. So here's what I here's how I define, and and I kind of waited until we were talking about this to make sure I had a good definition, and and I really liked the the stuff you brought. I said, um, when I'm sober, I'm living a quality, rewarding life, full of passion and purpose, mm. and that's the new Glenn. Versus the selfish son of a gun I used to be. So quality, passion, purpose. Yeah, quality, rewarding, passion, you know, purpose. And that happens 100% of every day? <sighs> no. Um, I mean, I, that's my objective, and, and I think that's where, that's the field that I play on. You know, the way, I, the way I've always said it, and man, I haven't said this in a while. But it's like that's the fairway that I live in. Mm-hmm. I live. I have a such a clearly defined fairway for myself today. Now, I'll still swing and miss. Mm-hmm. I'll still shank a ball OB. Mm-hmm. But I know what to do when I shank it OB. You know. Um, you know, not every call I have for work is a perfect uh, perfect call. But when I screw it up, you know. Not every conversation I have with my wife, you know, when I screw it up. Because sometimes, Mike, I just got some good zingers, man. They're just like, they're, in my mind, they're award-winning. 
and I would hate for them to go to waste. So then I say them, and then I immediately say, yeah, sorry, I shouldn't have said that. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, hey, I'm playing. I, I think I'm playing from that fairway. That's my, that's my objective. That's my, you know, goal for life is to live that. And, yeah, there's sometimes I have character defects. I still have character defects, and I'm always working on them. You know, that's one thing my wife said to me. She goes, man, you are relentlessly working on yourself. Isn't that sober? Yeah, I think that's a commitment to living that, you know, Rewarding living life. passion yeah. and, and purpose. I mean, my purpose is to stay sober, and I do a lot of stuff to do that, and help another alcoholic to achieve sobriety. So what I heard you say, though, in that is that you're, it's a sober, sober is the strive, not the destination. So others would say the journey. It's because you're because you're trying to move the ball from the tee to the green. You're sober is a journey. It's not a destination. Right. I mean, you don't just become I, sober one day. And I think, I think no. For me, it was progressive. Right. It, me too. Re Recovery is progressive. I'm, I'm not the lightning bolt guy, and I don't think you were either. Nope. Um. But I think that's why we use the term, we're on the sober path, mm -hmm. right? Instead of saying, hey, we're at the sober ski lodge, you know, or, or we've achieved <laughs> sobriety or, you know, I, I, I think it is a path. Right. Maybe, you know. Let me, let me sit on passion for a second. Mm -hmm. So I find my passion play is, in fact, in... Staying plugged into the sober community. Mm -hmm. I have a real passion for the next guy coming in the rooms. I can just so relate because I was there, right? And I never, I had desire pre-recovery, but never passion, really. I didn't, I, I think I was void of passion. I think this is a new experience for me. Do you find it to be a new experience? Or did you have passion for skiing and passion for you know, for building a business when you, before you came into recovery? I Before recovery, I had a passion on performing and delivering for Glenn. Okay. Um, I mean, I, I did some phenomenal things, mm -hmm. but it was self-serving. Mm -hmm. um, so I think, I think now, right... You know, I think, and, and here's why I know that I'm serving passion, right? And I just heard something this week, and it's like, you know, hey, if you wake up in the morning and you got to go to work and you're exhausted and, you know, you're, you're going to a job. But if you get up in the morning and you start attacking something and you're relentless with it and you're tireless with it and you do it and you just find time to get stuff done and, and you find time to pull back and, you know, get back to that and you, and you can't wait to dive back in and that that's a passion, mm -hmm. you know? And, and so when, when you say that you are, that your passion is working with, you know, and I'll use the term newcomer, I think right, you said right. it definitely, but you, you have a passion for newcomers, mm -hmm. you know, in Alcoholics Anonymous. That is so evident. And, and it's almost like, if somebody hangs out with you for a day, that would be so evident to anybody mm -hmm. because that's always when you got an extra 10 minutes, you're reaching out to somebody, you're texting somebody, you're looking something up, you're preparing another idea, right? You're, you're connecting just to make sure that the meetings are going off right or whatever, right? You're, you're attending to details um, that drive your, your passion and purpose, right? Because I think I, I think both those words, passion and purpose, go go hand in hand. Well, I agree and disagree. I think that yes, they could go hand in hand, and they should go hand in hand. Some people have passion, but it's the action that brings them to purpose. For me, anyway, I could have a passion to help the newcomer. If I'm not doing something about it, my passion isn't unfolding into a purpose. Right, so, I see that. So I totally see that. But but I I, I was gonna I was gonna move to purpose. I think that's, you were gonna move to strike. Yeah, I was move to strike. <laughs> move to strike, Your Honor. I killed him. I killed him. Jury <laughs> jury disregard <laughs> that. Disregard <laughs> that. That's um, awesome. So you know, there's a there's a book. Um, I, I guess let me set this up. 
If you're looking for purpose, I, I can't give you the magic wand, but I can give you one good resource, and it's called it's a book called Purpose Driven Life by Rick Warren. It's in our resource room. Um, you know, start exploring your purpose. What I found for me though is, and you said it so beautifully in in your definition of sobriety or what is sober, and that is that if you fan, you can fan your passion into your purpose. So you should already know what your purpose is if you understand what I your like passion that. is. And but but if you need a tool that that for it's forty day journey uh, that you take in the book, it's Purpose Driven Life by Rick Warren. It's good stuff. It's a starting point. I mean, we don't get commissions how on is the it, book. How is it forty days? Yeah, forty days. Are you sure? I, you, I think it's forty weeks. Yeah. Okay. Well, I was a, I did Evelyn Wood speed reading. Well, no, I and 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 I laugh at that. Because in 2014, when I was in my four-month program, I did that book. Uh-huh. And I think it's supposed to be one chapter a week. Mm-hmm. And I did one a day. Okay. And I had a whole notebook that was filled with stuff. Right? But you're supposed to, I think you're supposed to do it. You're checking it out, aren't you? I am indeed. Yeah, I, I think you're supposed to do it one chapter a week so you have time to reflect. Well, I was like power reflecting. Right, yeah. and and I think I got it done in forty days, forty minutes. But I, yeah, but I, I, I came out of that, and that was instrumental in me helping find my purpose. And one of the things that, that came out of there was serving others. Okay, which kind of coincidentally ties with step twelve, right? So uh, is it forty weeks or forty forty days? Yeah, you know what? Hold hold for hold for the hold for the answer to that. Check out the resource room. We'll give you the answer there. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. No, but I think, you know, I think, um, you know, the definition of sober, meaning not drinking or using uh, mind-altering substances, you know, I think that's more the definition of dry, right? Just not drinking, you mm-hmm. know. And I think sober is the byproduct of working a quality recovery program. Right. Yep. I agree. And a better way of living. It's action. And, it's action, Glenn. And then it all kicks in, man. No, it's totally action. Right. Do we do we cover it all? No. No, I don't think so. We could probably do <laughs> another. No but idea. but I will recommend people go back and listen to the Doctor John. Also listen to the Di- Dry Drunk uh, episode. It was good stuff. So I'll tell you, I listened to the Doctor John Step One episode. Mm-hmm. Listen to it twice. Mm-hmm. And what I found is. I learned as much the second time I listened to it as the first. Mm. I mean, there was so much stuff in there. And same with going to meetings. Right. I mean, I, I can go meetings back to back and back. And, you know, I guess my, my head latches on to stuff, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and then another thing I picked up, I just figured out you are the funny one. Because you say some really funny stuff. In my own head, I'm hysterical. No, I'm telling you, man. It's... It, you Can know, I tell you something? For, sitting here going through it, I miss, I miss most of the funny uh, stuff. For a couple of decades, my wife didn't think I was funny at all. No, wait. You, you have to share how, and we're just shooting the shit here, but you got to share how you classify your marriage. I love this. <laughs> well, frankly, I've been married. My wife's been married for 40 years, plus a couple of days. Uh-huh. Yeah, and uh, she's been very happily married. I've been married for 1,483 days. To, yes, we're both married to one another. Right, but she was married for 40 years, happily I've been married, married for, for four, four years. I've been married for four and years. And you've been married for four years. Yeah. It's all of a sudden. Dude, I think that gen- says it all, man. Yeah, I, think, I think you started behaving as a husband. It's my turn to do, do the right thing. I think you're home and uh, take, take care of that woman, man. She's, a, she's an angel. Hey, people listening, do the right thing. Uh, check out what sober means. Check out sobriety. It's a great way to live. Absolutely right. I couldn't say it more. Love you, man. Love you, brother. All right, talk to you. Good coffee, man. See you later. Bye-bye. Thanks for joining us for today's Coffee Chat. To contact the show, email us at podcast at sober.coffee. If you need immediate help, the AA hotline is 800-839-1686. The National Suicide Prevention Hotline is 800-273-8255. Remember, Mike and Glenn are sharing their own journey on the path to recovery. Any suggestions, medical or otherwise, are their own experiences and should not be viewed as professional advice. See you next week, and remember, there is a solution.